Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is the Parker 5th Technology IM Pen. Uh, first off, I want to thank my buddy Jim for throwing this in the package. Interesting little pen to take a look at. Quick size comparison, Parker Jada, right here. This is a uh, Bic, just general boring little pen, a uh, Pilot G2. So there you go. This is a pen that's sized pretty much like any other pen. No big worries about that there. The interesting thing about this pen is the uh, Parker 5th technology, and that's this guy here. If we look really close here, we can see is that although this looks like a fountain pen from a very, very far distance, in reality, this is just a porous tip sort of pen. The refill in this guy is separate and looks a lot like that. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's what that's all about. Um, but that's the Parker 5th technology, and according to them and their website, it combines the prestige and style of a fountain pen with the simplicity of a rollerball. Uh, so this little tip here is entirely fake. There is no reason whatsoever for this fountain pen-like shield to be on there except to be fancy. The feed on this is entirely fake as well. These plastic ribbings are just there to imitate a fountain pen. And, you know, at the end of the day, this is just your generic porous tip sort of pen. So, uh, anyways, let's take a look at this guy, uh, which is a very interesting, very strange little pen. Okay, so on the good side, uh, first off, it does not have any of the finicky aspects of a fountain pen. So, for instance, on an actual fountain pen, um, this is a Coeco Lily put here, by the way, um, you know, you can write just fine when you're holding the pen at the right angle, but if you flip the pen over, you can still get some writing, but if you're writing on the side of the pen, you don't really get anything. Uh, and so there is a degree to which you need to kind of uh, be in control of the angle of the pen. This is something you master after approximately 30 seconds, but nonetheless, it is something that the, uh, the, the Paca 5th here does not deal with. Because with this pen, you can write with any rotation, and it'll just write no problem. Um, it also doesn't have the travel concerns of a fountain pen. If a fountain pen is left uh, tipped down on an airplane with decompression and compression, it can uh, leak a little tiny bit. No big deal. Um, and this is also pretty durable, so no concerns there. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to write with. Um, you know, it's much better than, say, a ballpoint pen. If I use very little pressure with a ballpoint, you're not getting anything. Um, uh, but, you know, there is also an extent where, you know, it does require some pressure in order to write. Um, unlike, for instance, an actual fountain pen, but really, there's no way I can get this to move across the page without writing. That's the joy of the fountain pen, and so there you go. But it is a lot less pressure to write with than some other varieties of pen. That's good. Um, it looks nice enough. Um, you know, I showed this to the fiancé, and she said, oh, yeah, it's kind of classy with the, the, the cutouts there. Not bad. And I took the cap off, and she changed the tune a little bit, but that's a separate affair. And then it does give a nice fine line. Honestly, I mean, it's a good little pen for doodling um, because, well, porous point pens are well known for that. That's a nice thing for artists. So uh, there's your good on this guy. It's easy to write with relative to a fountain pen. Uh you know, because you don't have any of that learning curve stuff, no travel issues, it's decently enough. I mean, it's it's not going to be have durability issues particularly. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to write. It looks fine, and it does give you a nice fine line here, even though this is the medium refill. Um, so there you go. On the great front, I'll be honest, nothing's really super jumping out at me here. Um, that, that doesn't bode well, does it? But that's life. So let's go ahead and jump into the bad here. So on the bad side, um, first off, I'm not a huge fan of the feeling of uncapping and recapping this pen. It's not terrible, but it feels very plasticky, honestly. Um, you know, you pop it on there, I don't know, it doesn't feel durable, it doesn't feel snappy particularly. Um, I just don't love it compared to some other pens. So that's a little thing, and that's a complete nitpick, but it's something I'm not a fan of. Speaking of things I'm not a huge fan of, I don't tend to like when there's a huge extension above the clip, um, particularly if you're going to carry this in a shirt pocket with a flip over the top. That makes it a little bit awkward, but that's no big deal. The weight on this guy is kind of weird, honestly. It's non-committally heavy. Um, it's not actually heavy enough to feel great in the hand. You're looking at 1.2 ounces here um, versus... 0.8 for your Lilliput versus, I mean, it's way heavier than like your Parker Jada here, but it's not in the range of a pen that feels great to write with in the hand. When you've got the cap posted, the balance is a little far back, and so it kind of wants to jump out of your hand, and without the cap posted, well, it's okay. 
but the weight isn't stellar. It feels like they said, you know what, we need to make this pen just heavy enough that people feel like it's a heavy pen. Particularly people who don't do, who aren't really pen guys, because this isn't aimed at the pen people. So there you go. The pen itself is pretty expensive. There are different varieties of this Pocker IM that takes the fifth uh, sort of system, and, you know, they range from 55 to 70 bucks on the Amazon, uh, which is a lot of money for what you're getting here. This doesn't feel like strong metal. It doesn't feel particularly well polished up perfection or any way. No, it's it's just a little pricey there. And the refills are also pretty expensive. You're looking at six to ten bucks each for your little refill with the plastic tip here. Um, and they're not very easily available. You can get them on the Amazon. And they're also pretty big. Um, so I'm not sure this is something I'd want to just throw a spare of in my pack in case I run out. Uh, compare that to a very small like fountain pen refill or even a rollerball refill can be a little more compact than that. So I'm not a big fan of those, the refills there, given that they're so pricey, they're hard to find, and they're pretty huge. And then finally, I gotta say, just as a writing uh, utensil, uh, this is a little bit on the dry side to my taste. I mean, it works, but I, I feel like I really need to move a little bit more slowly than I would otherwise, and so it doesn't bring me particular joy uh, to write with. So anyways, uh, that's your bad. I don't love the feeling of uncapping and recapping. I don't love the extension above here. The weight is strange and the balance is weird when the cap is posted. The pen itself is a bit on the pricey side at about 70 bucks, and uh, the uh, refills are very on the pricey side at 6 to 10 bucks, and they're not easily available. They're huge. And the pen on the whole isn't that much fun to write with. It feels like writing with any other porous point pen, which isn't ideal in a lot of ways. Let's go into the ugly, because sadly there's ugly. So, okay, um, on the ugly side, first and foremost, the overall impression of the pen in my hand is kind of plasticky. I don't know if it's a lacquer, I don't even know what this material is in the back here, but it doesn't feel really strong, it doesn't feel really luxurious, it, honestly, it doesn't feel like what I'd want out of a $60 pen. In a lot of ways, this all-metal Parker Jada just feels a little bit more substantial to me, not in weight by any means, but just in overall construction than this guy. This feels very plasticky. Um, and so that's a little ugly. Um, but there, there's bigger uglies in that this pen is supposed to be kind of a bridge and a gap between the fountain pens and the rollerballs and the thing is, the thing is it doesn't really have any of the advantages of a fountain pen. It's dry uh, in its writing. It's inconsistent with light pressure. You don't get the same variety of ink that you get with a fountain pen. Uh, you don't, the refills are a lot more expensive than with a fountain pen. There's not the same adjustability. You can't, for instance, have the tip reground or adjust the ink flow or anything like that. And the build quality, honestly, isn't there relative to even some of your lower end fountain pens. So it doesn't really match up well to a fountain pen. But it also doesn't really match that well up to a rollerball either. I would rather write with a rollerball in terms of the dryness of the writing. That's not great. Again, the build quality relative to even your mid-range rollerballs isn't stellar here. And it's also not great for applying pressure to a piece of paper, uh, which is something you have to do with carbon paper and things like that. So it's not great there. It doesn't have any of the advantages of a gel pen um, because it's dry, it's expensive, and the refills are really expensive, unlike your Pilot G2 here. And it's not even that great as a porous tip sort of pen. Um, you know, the, these, the porous tip pens are not super common in the world, but they're definitely out there, and this isn't a great one of them. Uh, they're great for inking and things like that, but the flow on this guy isn't really great. The tip is kind of obstructed by virtue of this big fake fountain pen thing. And honestly, it's a little bit on the stiffer side than I'd like to see in a porous point pen. So it's not even great there. So what you've got here is not a fountain pen. It's not a rollerball. It's not a gel pen. It's not even a great porous tip pen. Instead, all you've got here is just this okay, pretty generic writing utensil in this really super pretentious package. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, you're not fooling anybody. When I showed this to the fiance and said, you know, what do you think of this pen? She said, oh, it looks kind of cool. Then I took the tip off. She kind of said, oh, wait, that's, that's not a fountain pen, but why the heck are they making it? And that's exactly, you know, half a glance, and you're going to be able to tell that this isn't a fountain pen. Yet they, they went there, and it just doesn't make any damn sense to me. So that's the ugly, is that it's not a great pen. It's not a great comparison to other kinds of pens. 
And at the end of the day, its chief little gimmick here, the fact that it's fake fountain pen, isn't fooling anybody and just kind of looks weird. So let's go ahead and jump into the final conclusion on Yapaka fifth generation technology, whatever the heck they want to call it. Okay, so you know those t-shirts that have like a suit jacket printed on them, where like the suit jacket is on there, then you get a little tie, get the little uh, collared shirt underneath printed onto the t-shirt, little boutonniere, pocket square, everything like that. So you're actually just wearing a t-shirt, but from a long distance away, it might look like you were wearing a suit. Yeah, that's pretty much what this pen is for the real. Uh, functionally speaking, it is not a fountain pen. It is not, frankly, a quality pen. It's not a great pen in any particular way. But from a long enough distance, you might look like you're somebody who's using a fountain pen if you're writing with this. But the thing is, as soon as that distance is closed, somebody's going to look down and go, what the heck is this guy doing? Why isn't he using a fountain pen? Or a reasonable pen, for that matter. I mean, it's a little kind of cool, but at the end of the day, really? I, what, what, what are you after here? And so, I mean, yeah, maybe you'll pass from a distance as somebody who's cool enough to use a fountain pen, if that's what you think about fountain pen users. Well, not cool, I swear to you. But nonetheless, um, the moment that distance is closed, it's just kind of ridiculous. And I, there are just no functional advantages to using this pen at all. So I think you'd be better off getting a fountain pen, or getting a really good rollerball, or even a really crappy rollerball, or a gel ink pen. Uh, you can get a lot of good things for the price of this, and honestly, you're going to do better functionally 100%. So uh, unless you are the guy who wears the, uh, the, this would be great for the pocket of your t-shirt that looks like a suit pocket, uh, but you know, I, I just don't see it otherwise. So I'd go ahead and skip the pocket fifth. I would plead the fifth on buying one of these because you don't want to incriminate yourself by purchasing a pocket fifth. Yeah, okay, that wasn't funny, but I tried, you know. Uh, but anyway, skip this guy, get a real pen, which is pretty much guaranteed to be better in pretty much every way. Sorry there, Parker. Um, but hopefully this was interesting that I made the right call. Get it right. And uh, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day.